praise God. It's good to laugh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. I said, praise the name of Jesus. That name which is above every other name, we praise the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, we shout hallelujah. We say thank you, Lord, for your love, for your grace, and your mercies. Oh, God, we thank you. My God, my God, my God, I give you thanks tonight for life, for health, for strength, my Father, for how much you love us, Father God. Oh, God, thank you for your faithfulness, God, for you're a faithful God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Halle, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I'm alive, I'm alive and I'm well. Praise his wonderful name. This evening I give God all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. I thank God for life, I thank God for health, I thank God for strength. My name is Pastor Sadie Connor, coming to you from Jesus Compassion Ministries. Tonight is our Bible study night, and the teacher tonight will be Pastor Beverly Robinson. So now we are going into prayer. And I'm going to ask, hallelujah, Sister Madura, to open in prayer. Hallelujah. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our night lesson is taken from Psalms 24. Psalms 24. And I'm going to do one verse. And the congregation will pick up verse 2. And we continue until we get to verse 10. Praise God. Psalms 24. And it reads as follows. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hills? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of bread that we be taking, that he shall be for Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, he everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King, the King of, of glory, glory, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. And we know that, that he is the King of glory. Thank God for the, all the other king, but I'm talking about the king, this king the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the loving God. He is the King of glory. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. We give you thanks. Hallelujah. And we say, 
welcome Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We are in your presence. Yes, my Lord. Fill us with your power, my God, my God. Come live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power, your power, Lord. Come live inside of me. You're the living waters. You're the living water. Hallelujah. And never dry in fountain. Glory to God. Comforter and counselor. Take, take complete control as we welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You're welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence, my God, my God. Fill us with your power, oh yes, oh yes. Come live inside of me, yes God, yes God. Welcome Holy Spirit, we welcome you Holy Spirit. We are in your presence, yes, my God. Fill us with your power, oh, yes, oh, yes. Come live inside of me, oh, God. You're the, hey, glory to God, hallelujah. And never dry in fountain. A counselor and counselor come and take full control. Oh God, oh God, thank you, Lord. Welcome, welcome, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. God, come live inside of me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We welcome the Holy Spirit. We welcome your Holy Spirit. Oh, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Give him some praise in the house. Give mighty God praise. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Hallelujah. For he's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. So we bow before him tonight and we shout holly, hallelujah. We shout hallelujah, 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 makoshe karabasi kondore yabasaya. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies, my God. Thank you, Lord, oh, you redeem us from a life of sin. And because of that, we just want to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you walk with us and you talk with us and you say that we are your own, Father God. Yes, God, yes, God. My life is in your hands, hallelujah. Bless God, bless God, bless God. Thank God, thank you, Lord, for your people, my God. Thank you for everyone that is in the house, my God. Oh, bless your people tonight, Father God. Oh, God, you know those that are sick in body. I lift up Sister Nelly to you right now, Father God. Touch Sister Nelly. 
touch Sister Nelly. She weak in body, my God, but she can draw strength from your daddy. So we thank you for touching her right now. We thank you for Sister Lynn, Lord God. Continue, my God, to touch Sister Lynn. Oh, we thank you for what you have done already, Lord. But oh God, oh God, oh God, what you start, you always complete. So we thank you, Father God. We thank you for Sister Joy, Lord God. Oh God, how oh you kept her. Oh God, oh God, oh God, have your way tonight, Lord. My God, have your way. Have your way tonight, Lord. God, you see some are grieving of their loved one that they lost, Father God. I touch Sharon and the rest of family tonight, Father God. Have your way in their lives, Father. Oh God, oh God, oh God, you know the daughter. Touch her tonight, hallelujah. Mighty God, mighty God, we call upon you, Father God. God, give them peace in the midst of the storm. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we lift up Nathan to you tonight, Lord. You know all about Nathan, Father God. Oh, God, continue to watch over Nathan. Lord God Almighty, touch Nathan tonight, God. Touch Sister Sandra tonight, Father God. Oh, God, oh God, oh God, revive her tonight, Father God. And give her your peace which passeth all understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we lift up children all over the world to you tonight, my God. Our young people is in trouble, Father God. But tonight, God Almighty, touch the young people tonight God touch them tonight God oh God those that are going in the wrong direction turn them around turn them around daddy oh God oh God you know every special need child tonight father God oh God you know we are the at right now some is right here father God right here in our congregation God and they are all over my God I'm reminded of Sarah disabling father God touch Sarah my God touch Sarah tonight my God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus 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 we thank you for the parents my God oh God they don't give them away they don't throw them away but God they're working with the children my God provide 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 have your way tonight in JCM my God pour out your spirit in this house father God God Almighty pour out pour out my God and help us to receive Father God and to keep on going for you my God sometimes the road get rough Father God sometimes it is rocky Father God but God once you are with us it's all right it's all right, God Almighty. I praise you tonight. I worship you tonight. I bless your holy name. That name which is above every other name. Oh, we thank you, Father God. Great God, great God. You come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So we thank you, my God. We thank you for life. We thank you for life. I bless each and every one under the sound of my voice those on YouTube those on the phone line blessing 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 hallelujah give God praise saints give God praise he's here he's here give him praise 
Give him praise, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. We look to you. We don't look to man, Father God. For you said in your word, we must lift up our eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh our help, Father God. So we know and we know and we know, Rabba Shekete, that our help come from you, Father God. So I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you. Hey, hey. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh wind upon us tonight, my God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you for the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that never loses power. I that blood never die. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, your presence makes such a difference. Thank you for your presence in this house, my God. Thank you, Lord God. Sweet Holy Spirit, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Come and do what no one else can do in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy, my God, mercy upon America, mercy in the White House, mercy in Congress, hallelujah, mercy, 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 Father God, we're crying out for mercy tonight, Lord, have your, oh Jesus, have your way, Lord, as we worship and adore you, ay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, he's here. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, hey, hey. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the fire. Let the fire fall and let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Halle, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, Hallelujah, hey, he's the king of kings, and he's the lord of lords. My God Almighty, what a mighty God we serve. What a Lord oh Jesus, what a loving God we serve. He's great and he's mighty. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, hey, hey. Glory. Thank you. Oh, yes, Lord. He's the king of kings hey he's the lord of lord hey name is jesus 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 oh he's the king he is the king hey of king and he's the lord of lord hey miss jesus 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 Oh, he is the king. Praise God. You see the king of your life tonight. Praise God. 
praise God. I give God all the praise, hallelujah, all the honor and all the glory. I thank God for the anointing in this house. Praise God. And we don't have to bite. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Before you sit down, I'm going to ask each and every one to quickly give a scripture verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and everything else will be added to Sadie. Praise God. Jesus. Praise him. Amen. Praise him. Come on now. Sit down, sit down. Amen. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Acknowledge him all your, in all your ways and he will direct your path. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Oh, you do already? <laughs> blessing, blessing. Praise God. To God, <laughs> to God be the glory. Great things he has done. And I just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome in this place tonight. God is about to do something special in somebody's life tonight. Just be ready to receive. You know, sometimes we, the water is flowing, but we have to step in. Praise God. So at this time, I'm going to call on Pastor Robinson to come forward. Praise, praise you, Jesus. Praise the, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Good evening to each and everyone in the sanctuary. Good evening to those on the YouTube line and those who are on the prayer line and the phone line. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this moment, Almighty God. We thank you for what you're about to teach us, oh God. We thank you, God, for giving us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. Make your word so clear and so plain to us, oh God. Guide and direct. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening to our senior pastor, Pastor Sadie Connor. Good evening to all the pastors here and the ministers here in the sanctuary. Good evening to everyone. I'm speaking to you from Jesus Compassion Ministry. Located at 8199 West McNabb in Tamarack, 33321. I am Beverly Robinson, assistant pastor. And um, please take your Bible 
And let us go to 2 Kings chapter 20. Second Kings chapter 20. And my topic is guard your house. Second Kings 20. Guard your house. I'll be reading from verses 1 to 11. Verse 1. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept sore. Verse 4. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifty years and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake and Isaiah said take a lump of figs and they took and lay it on the boil and he recovered and I Ezekiah said unto Isaiah what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day. And Isaiah said, This sign shall thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he had spoken. Shall a shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Ezekiah said, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. And I stop there for now. Verse 1. For those who just came on the prayer line, the phone line, and the Facebook, we are in 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. What a message. Ezekiah is sick. And he's weak. And Ezekiah assumed he's going to die. And God spoke to his prophet Isaiah and gave him a message to give the sick Ezekiah. And tell Ezekiah to set his house in order. For thou shalt die and not live. Ezekiah, set your house together. Make your will. Settle your estate, Ezekiah. Put your affairs in order, Ezekiah. For the ease of those who shall reign after you. There's some people going to reign after you. Set everything together. So when you pass away, Ezekiah, they'll know what to do and what preparation to make. Laying on his sick bed. And God used the prophet to tell Ezekiah he going to die. And when God sent a message like that, that's final. Let's see what happened in verse 2. Then he, Ezekiah, turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, 
Ezekiah heard such a drastic message. And maybe he couldn't get out of the bed to get on his knees. But he needed some privacy right here. So he turned to the wall. And he's a king, so the room must have been filled of people. But he couldn't move. He turned to the wall away from those around him because he had to do a drastic moment thing now. He didn't call his friend on the cellular and say, guess what? God just told me I'm going to die. He didn't have time to yell across the room and say, go get so-and-so. He didn't have time for that. Ezekiah want to do one thing right now. The only person can help him is God. So he turned his face to the wall and prayed. Because he had just received the sentence of death. And if it was reversible, it must be reversed by prayer. And only the hand of God can reverse that. Because God is the one that sent the message. And only God can change it. So now Ezekiah in verse 3 He's going to pray now. And he said, I beseech thee, O Lord. So he's talking to God. Remember now. He reminding God as God don't know. Remember now how I had walked before thee in truth. God, remember. I was obeying your word. I did what your word says. And with a perfect heart. I did it with a perfect heart, God. I didn't miss. I did what you told me to do. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. Your sight, God. And Ezekiah wept sorely. Ezekiah did not pray unto anyone else. All he said, God, spare me. He didn't say, God, take my life. He didn't say, God, let your will be done. But he said, oh, Lord, remember me. Remember how I lived before you. Remember how I kept my heart perfect before you. Not before the men that was working around him. Not before his counselor, before God. And I did what you told me to do. And I was good in your sight, God. And Ezekiah began to weep. He talked directly to God. You see, there's a time when we got to go to God for ourselves, and somebody can't pray for you at that moment when you hear you're going to die but Ezekiah was able to say I walk before the truth so he didn't have to worry about the life he was living before he said I walk and I kept up a, a perfect heart before you God it wasn't he didn't have time to say well, Lord have mercy upon me he was just reminding God to let he walk a straight line before God. He kept God's word. And he did which was good in his sight. And it's an example for us as the believers that we have to live according to the word. We have to keep a perfect heart before God, not man. And we have to do what is good in the sight of God. So that the only way we can do that is to see what the word says in order to obey God. And once you and I are living according to the word, every time we read the word, we will obey the word. Little by little, go on, keep on obeying the word, keeping a perfect heart before God. Then we have to just please God because we can't please man. Because when we please God, man don't try to criticize and say something. But as long as we're obeying God's word, we can remind God who we are to him. So here Ezekiah wept sore. After he prayed, he began to weep bitterly now. Because only God's mercy can help him. Because he's not ready to die yet. Verse 4. And it came to pass. A four before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying. So Isaiah gave Ezekiah the message. 
He had no more to say. They just say what God says. Turn around and begin to walk up now. Take care of whatever he has to take care of. But while Isaiah is walking out, God is listening to Ezekiah prayer. That was an SOS prayer. And right away, God decided to answer Ezekiah prayer. So in the middle of the court now, the courtyard, God began to talk to Isaiah, and he says in verse 5, turn again, turn around, Isaiah, and tell Ezekiah, the, you know, the captain of my people, that's how much the connection Ezekiah had with God. So God could say to Isaiah, the captain of my people, there uh, was a relationship between God and Ezekiah. For God to brag about Ezekiah, Go tell the captain of my people. Because Ezekiah was the king at that time. Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. God said, tell him, I heard your prayer. I have seen thy tears. I see where you're crying, Ezekiah. Behold, I, God, will heal thee. God said, I'm going to hear you. Tell him that, Ezekiah. And on the third day, thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. What a great promise. What a wonderful promise. That God could hear an SOS prayer from his servant. And to tell Isaiah, make a U-turn. Go back and tell him. And he didn't say, go tell Ezekiah. He said, the captain of my people. That's a privilege, that's an honor. When God called you and I the captain of his people. And he says, thus saith the Lord. Go tell him, don't tell him, tell him that I, tell him I, God, says so. And the God of David, thy father, reminding Ezekiah of his forefather, David. And reminding, I heard your prayer, Ezekiah. Your prayer did not go up in vain. And I see the tears. So when we pray and when we cry out to God, if nobody else see your tears, God see your tears. He bottled it up in heaven. So don't be afraid to cry before God. He see every tear that come down because it's precious in the sight of God. And then he says, tell him, I will heal him. I'm not going, you're not going to die right now, Ezekiah. And then on the third day, Ezekiah, you're going to church. I can see where Ezekiah was a church person. So God is saying, no, you're going to church, Ezekiah. Six, God ain't finished with him yet. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. Ezekiah, I'm not just going to heal you. But I'm going to exceed what you ask because Ezekiah didn't ask for a long life. But Ezekiah, I'm going to give you 15 more years to live. And then God says, and I, God, will deliver thee. I'm going to deliver you, Ezekiah. And the city, not just Ezekiah, the whole city of Jerusalem, out of the hand of the king of Assyria. So that means, the king of Assyria had some hold over Ezekiah and the people. And God said, I'm going to free you now. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. When I defend the city, it's not for you, Ezekiah. Him, God, is going to get the glory. Because the people are going to know it's God moving on behalf of the people. And he's going to do it because he made a vow with David. In spite of what David had done, God had made a vow with David that he would have somebody to sit on the throne. And God was keeping his word. So I see here, Ezekiah, you're going to get healed. You're going to get delivered. And God gonna have 15 more years. God made some great promises to Ezekiah. 
And God said, he going to do all of that for Ezekiah. Why? Because Ezekiah, when he heard the news, he turned his face to the war. And he began to pray. And he began to cry unto God. And that is showing you and I. When things not going right in our lives, in our homes, go turn your face to the wall and begin to pray to God. And if you need to cry, go ahead and cry because God going to hear your prayer. As long as we believe by faith that when you open your mouth and begin to speak to God, God hears us. And the same God that heard Ezekiah is the same God now that's listening to our prayer and to our cry. And we gonna get delivered as long as we are living before God in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in God's sight. And then I see where God will go beyond what we even pray about because he did it for Ezekiah. And there may be one or two things we pray about, and there may be some more things we didn't mention in the prayer. And God said, I'm going to take care of that too. Because it needs to be taken care of to protect you. Verse 7. And Isaiah said, so Isaiah went back to Ezekiah with the message. A wonderful message. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. And they took and lay it on the boil, and he recovered. Something as simple as a lump of figs to put on Ezekiah boil. He recovered. But it wasn't the fig that healed him. He, God is the one that healed Hezekiah. You know, sometimes we, we go to the doctor. But before we went to the doctor, we went to God in prayer. And the doctor will say, well, I'll give you some medicine. And you take maybe a few. But it wasn't the medicine that healed you. It's because you first went to God in prayer, believing. And God's grace and mercy heal us. So I see where when things coming up in our lives, before we pick up the phone and call this person and that person, oh, you know how I feel, I, I, go to God first. Because he is the greatest physician. He is the one that's going to heal us. Verse 8. And Ezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? And that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day. Here now, Ezekiah asks Isaiah, some question. See, Ezekiah is concerned about going to church. When he, Ezekiah asked for a sign, not that he distrust God, for he looked on the things promised to him to be very great, but that he shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day. He was concerned about getting to church. So he wanted a sign. He was in a hurry. And now he's asking for a sign. Verse 9. And Isaiah said, This sh sign shall thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he had spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? So Isaiah said, Now you want a sign? Okay, God will give you a sign. But he's asking Ezekiah, what do you want to do now? Do you want the, the shadow of the sun go forward 10 degrees? Or do you want the shadow of the sun to go backward 10 degrees? Hear what Ezekiah is going to answer him. And Ezek, in verse 10, Ezekiah said, it is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. It's easy for God to put the, sun of the, the, the shadow of the sun 10 degrees. But that the shadow return backwards 10 degrees. Ah, he's giving God a, 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 a work to do now. He desires the sun to go back 10 degrees, and only God can do that. 
man cannot do that. Because either way would be a great miracle for Ezekiah. But going backward would seem more strange and more greater. Because he said, going forward 10 degrees, it's okay. God can do that. That's a piece of cake for God. But to ask God to let the sun go backward 10 degrees, now he's putting God to a test. And of course, God going to pass any man's test. 11. And Isaiah the prophet, he just, he just hear what Ezekiah said. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord. So Isaiah got to do some praying now. And he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. So now when Ezekiah tell him how he want the sun to go backward, Isaiah got to go seek God now and to pray to God and ask him, God, just put it backwards for him for 10, then 10 degrees so he can know and really believe. Although he believed, but God, you know, sometimes God will say something to us and we believe, but we just want some proof to do it. Sometimes you go to, you go to the doctor and he tell you something you don't like. It sounds dangerous. And you go to this prophet and you go to that prophet and you go to another prophet and they all give you the same answer. And it's either we're going to believe it and accept it or we're going to worry ourselves to no reason. So Isaiah just prayed to God. God, show him. He want a sign? Show him, God, that the sun can go back 10 degrees. And God did it. Now, when you look at as Ezekiah, we see Ezekiah was lining up according to the word of God. He was obeying God's word. He went to God in prayer. God heard him, and he answered him. Now, when we move on now, we're going to see the godly king mess up. Starting in verse 12. At that time, Berodak Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Ezekiah. For he had heard that Ezekiah had been sick. Here now, the king of Babylon heard Ezekiah was sick. So he decided. Ezekiah need a gift to cheer him up because he's sick. But this is what happened in verse 13. And Ezekiah arcing unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures there was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion, that Ezekiah showed them not. Now, these are not friends. And even if they were friends, you don't show them everything. Ezekiah, first of all, these are idol worshippers. And Babylon is idol worshippers. They came with a present. Take the present, say thank you, and show them the door. But Ezekiah now begin to show them everything in his house. He want to show off what he have in his house. Ezekiah, what kind of thing are you doing showing your enemy what you have? But you know, we do the same thing. The devil will send somebody to you, army, and they will friend you up. And when they have you in your, their pocket, we begin to tell them things that they don't need to know. Mm -hmm. Begin to confide in them. Begin to tell them it may be what's going on in your house. Because that's my friend. 
But the devil sent that individual. You may begin to show them your bank account. You may, you, we don't have books no more, so you go on the internet or you go on your phone and you show them how much money in your account. Or you may tell them the problem going on in your house when we should have been praying about that. Because when we, we have situations in the house that are not nice and, 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 and we should go to God and pray about it. But when we tell the enemy, he uses that against us. Because here Ezekiah got no business showing all these things to enemy. We have to be careful because the enemy will send somebody and they will rub beside you so cool and nice. And you think that's my best friend. And they will even do nice things to you to make you think we're buddies. And they're just waiting for a moment to open the trap door and put you in there and lock it. Because that's what's happening here now. Ezekiah should not be exposing his business to the enemy. And he's the king. Verse 14. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Ezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Ezekiah said, They come from a far country, even from Babylon. The prophet is asking, what are these people doing here, Ezekiah? Where, what's their business here? What are they doing here, Ezekiah? Ezekiah, what's the matter with you? 15. And he said, what, as I is asking a question, what have they seen in thy house? What did you show them, Ezekiah? And Ezekiah answered, all the things that are in my house have they seen. They see everything. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Oh, oh. Ezekiah showed them everything. The enemy don't need to see your business. Everything that was in Ezekiah's house the enemy has it in his mind because he's going to use it against you later on. And Isaiah, when Ezekiah should have been talking to Isaiah about what's going on, he didn't. Ezekiah came and he told him all these things. He have left nothing, nothing for the enemy. To trapped him with. And, and, and in St. John 10.10 10 tells us, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. The thief, he come to kill, to steal, to kill, and when he finished, he gonna destroy. But Jesus thanked God for the second part of that same verse. Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Thank God for that second part to encourage us. Because here this thief come and he come to take everything that Ezekiah have. And Ezekiah said, on, and verse 16, and Isaiah said unto Ezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. Ezekiah, you just messed up. And while he was talking to him, God was talking to the prophet also. Behold, 17 and 18. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Not then shall be left, saith the Lord. So Isaiah is saying what God just told him. You show the enemy everything in your house, Ezekiah. And because of that, Ezekiah, everything is your house. And what your fathers have stored up and have passed on to you, Ezekiah, 
The enemy is going to come at the appointed time. And they're going to take everything you have, Ezekiah. And you're going to have nothing. And it wasn't just Isaiah just speaking. He said, say it, the Lord God say it going to happen. We have to be careful when we show things to other people. Extremely careful because we don't know who is who. They'll be smiling and laugh at you and even go to lunch and go to dinner with you and, oh, that's my best friend. But it's something behind that. And then in 18, and thy sons that shall, shall, it ain't happened yet, shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget. He's talking about sons that Ezekiah has not yet, born yet. Shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Ezekiah, there's some sons you're going to have. They haven't born yet. But it's a curse now on his sons that is going to be born. When the thief come, the Babylonian come, they're going to take your son. They're going to put them in captivity. And they're going to make them eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. You remember eunuchs um, when uh, Esther, when Esther was, uh, when she came there and they had to take her and the, Purification, it was eunuchs that was taking care of her. Eunuchs are men that don't get married. They live in a certain lifestyle only to the king. They're not homosexual. That's the life they live. And now he's saying, Ezekiah, every son that you have, going to have, the Babylonians are going to take them from you. You won't be able to see your sons get married and have children because they're going to be eunuchs in the enemy's camp. 19. Then said Ezekiah unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. I agree. He, he couldn't say anything else. What God has said is good. And he said, Is it not good? If peace and truth be in my days. So now because this is going to happen in his son days. It's like Ezekiah was saying, well, it's not going to happen when I'm, when I'm here. So it's kind of okay. But he's the one that did the, the wickedness. And the curse went from the father unto the son. Sons. So we as adults can put curse upon our children. If we are not careful. And that's why even now. There's many generational curse. Upon our children. That we have to break in the name of Jesus. Because there's sometimes in a family. You have a pattern going on from grandfather to father to son. And grandsons. Or vice versa. So we have to be careful with the life we live so we don't pass a curse unto our children. 2021, and the rest of the acts of Ezekiah and all his might and how he made a pool and a conduit and brought water into the city. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Ezekiah slept with his fathers and Manasseh, Manasseh his son, reigned in his stead. So Ezekiah tried to make up for the things he have done, he made a pool and a conduit so that people could get water come into the city because at that time there was no water. You and I have to guard our house. And we can only guard it by the direction of the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Life, as much as we're supposed to be very smart, 
we somewhat do some stuff that we should have never done. Amen. And we're still doing it now. And it, it's happening even now. Mm -hmm. So it shows me that it's not just now we're coming from way down. Yes. Now, when I think about the whole thing, and I'm saying, but yesterday was pretty honest to open up back also to the prophet and say, man, I have done this. But I noticed that even though he was honest to him, there was still no repentance or where God forgave him. Or he didn't ask for repentance. Remember when God told him he was going to die, he cried out to God. But now he heard what he did. There was no crying out. So pride stepped in now. And he didn't bother to cry out to God for what he just did. And I noticed where he was saying, hey, by the time that's supposed to come about, I'm going to be long gone. <laughs> so he kind of pushed off back and who is coming behind him. Pride. And that's to show us when we do something wrong, say, done, whatever, it's time to run to God and repent. We can't brush it off. I said, well, oh, it's time for repentance. We can't be too proud not to go to God and repent. Because the Bible tells us he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But he's waiting for us, the believers, when we do wrong, to ask God for forgiveness and mercies. Also, uh, you, you, you know, sometimes it's like having, it's just like us here. I might say, well, I take my sister right here as a friend. And I don't see her as someone who kind of cut against me. And then I started share things with her. Mm -hmm. And not knowing that that individual, as soon as we finish, then Somebody could call and say, Mike, what did he do? I said, like what? He said, Sister Melissa, he was like, said, what? Well, I was just kind of just excited and I just sharing sh some stuff with her, not knowing that I should have just shut up. So is I so sometimes I don't know if it's stupidity or what I should really phrase it as, because I know there are times I share things and not realizing that what I share with the perfect individual, I should not. And oftentimes, people sit down like a cynic. Whatever I'm saying, they keep on gobbling it up. And they know that in their heart that they're going to go out there and try to do things to, to harm me. Because now you have to pay the price now. For, and it's not just him alone, but it's a family thing. That's why we need to ask God for wisdom, wisdom. knowledge, and understanding. And we need to ask God to keep our mouth closed. But I'll watch over our mouth. But should be told, um, not everybody who cry out for, for wisdom gonna just gonna hand out it like that. Let's let's let, let's be real, you know, because there are times there are things that we cry out for and it don't come early enough, but yet still along the way we get caught up. We need because but if we ask God for wisdom, he will give us a wisdom, especially when a thing where but, you know, there's sometimes God will show you something with regard to the person. It may be something very small, and we push it aside and let it go. And he's trying to show us something. The, the, even, the person may say something very small or do something. And, and, and we just say, ah, oh, no, no, that, no, not, no, not that person. No, that's my friend. So we have to be on guard. We are spirit being, Holy Ghost fill. And we have to ask, keep on asking God to guide us. We must ask him, guide me, Lord. Teach me, show me. Because there's some times when we're not sure even then. But we have to ask God continually. We have to be careful. We have to be so, so careful. And even when God shows us things and we push it off, he, he, he won't stop. He'll keep on showing us the little things. Little things. They may not even show us anything, but just little things about the individual to, 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 to guide us, to, to, to let us get alert. 
And if sometimes you suspect something, run to God. God, I, I'm not sure what you're showing me. Show it to me again, God. Let me hear someone so say or do something. I need your guidance, oh God. Because we need God's guidance 24-7. Because we've got to be so careful. So careful as children of God. And he wants us to be quick to, to, to understand. And sometimes God may not say anything to us at the time, but sometimes he'll send his word. And there's something in that word for me. So that's why when the word goes forth, I have to be attentive. Because there's something God is pointing out to me to be alert about. It's so much. And that's why we have to read the word also. That's our direction. Praise God. We thank God for the word tonight. We thank God for Pastor Robinson. Just continue to pray for her and that God will continue to use her. Um, some people, Brother Mike, they only friend you because they want to know your business. Yeah. Then when they know your business, they go and spread it. Some people only say, I am your friend because of what they can get from me. Amen. Amen. So as pastor said, we have to ask God to show us who is on our side mm -hmm. and for us. Pastor, sometimes we are too excited to open our mouth too. <laughs> That's true. Too excited that we have to open our mouth. Yeah. You see. But you know something? I still want to say there are good friends that you can confide in. They are still around. But some, they work with Oprah Winfrey. Okay? So, and it's good to have a friend. It's good to have a friend. But not everybody is your friend. And that's where we have to use wisdom, what to share with Mary and what not to share. For even in here, we have to be very careful. For you have people that carry news to people that leave the church. And they see one come and laugh in your face. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Sister Jean, come and make the announcements, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, so, tomorrow is Wednesday, and there will be prayer and fasting right here in the sanctuary at 9 a.m. until. And then Thursday, it's free. There is no sunrise mission. There is no choir rehearsal. But Friday, 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 this is the place that you want to be this Friday at 7.30 p.m. It won't be a regular prior service. We will be having an infilling service this Friday. So refill this Friday. So if you need to fill up, you know when your gas is going low, you go to the gas station and you get gas in your car. So sometimes our spiritual life goes down. So this Friday, 7.30, be here or be square. And then um, Saturday, it's uh, Sunrise Mission. They're having their summer talent show at 7 p.m. So if you don't have anything doing, you can you know, go and support. Also, it's the last Saturday, so men meets at 4.30 for prior and practice. And because it's the last Saturday also, the intercessors are here in the sanctuary from 9.30 p.m until 12.30 Sunday morning or until. And then Sunday, we are right back here again in the sanctuary on Facebook and on the prior line for our Sunday service. And it's um, men's, men's Sunday this Sunday. Men will be in charge. And also to keep in mind, um, on September the 17th, 
at 9 a.m. New Divine Apostolic, they're having their annual prior breakfast, and it's at the Sunrise Soccer Club at Knob Hill. The tickets are $25, so if you're going, please see me, and see me soon, because it's the next couple Saturdays, and um, you know, I'm sure they need to know how many people will be coming. So it's only $25, I have tickets, so if you're interested in going, you can see me, thanks. And we have a visitor, so. Make sure you go to Sister Jean and say you are going. There is a surprise, but I'm not going to talk about the surprise tonight. You have to register to know about the surprise. Praise God. Um, tonight we have a visitor in our midst, and I would appreciate if you would stand and give your name. And I just want to let you know you're at home. Okay, when we come off the air, can we pray for you? Sure. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. At this time, missionary Logan. Father. <laughs> <laughs> missionary Loris will be <laughs> taking up the night's <laughs> offering. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Mm. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he came. Hallelujah. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. Oh, but I'm glad, so glad he did. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you because you sacrificed your life for us. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you that for what you have done for us. To remind us that we can, so that we can keep our hearts in perfect peace with you. Father, tonight we're trying to give offering to you. Oh, offering on you, Father God. Bless it as it comes for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, Sister V in the Bahamas sent her love. Sister Dawn sent her love. Also, I just want JCM to know that Brother Kenneth Reeves is going to be with the Lord. He passed away about one o'clock today. Praise God. So remember to pray for me. That's Mother Beryl's son, Sharon Jones Reeves. Hallelujah. He's going to be with the Lord. And if, if there is no change, the funeral will be right here. Or he was a member of Jesus Compassion Ministries. So keep up the family in prayer. Praise be to God. God is good. We give him all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Anyone on the line need prayer? 
all minds are clear. In our closing prayer, I'm going to ask Pastor Ben to close us out. Um, asking you to please pray for Lisa and Omari in we're kind of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. All minds are clear? Okay, we will be coming off the air, but just stay back. Go ahead, go for it, my sister and sir. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, God. We praise you. Yes. We worship you. We magnify you. We thank you for another Tuesday night where we can come together to study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing your word of truth. Even as your woman servant has given out, God, I pray you will fill her up afresh even right now in the name of Jesus. God, help us to continue to meditate on your word remembering that some of our greatest victories require more prayer and turning our own faces to the wall because that's when we're at risk the most. I lift up Lisa and her son to you, God. I know there's no distance in prayer. I thank you for touching her and him. I thank you for meeting their every need. You know what they are, Father God, and you are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Rapha. So whatever is needed with that family now, we send your word of love. We send your word of healing. We send everything to them, even right now on angel wings. And we pray, God, that you will just bless them. God, we'll be leaving this building, but we're not leaving you. We thank you for taking us home safely on tonight as we continue to meditate on your word. We just thank you for the balance of the week for everything that will be done, that we will remember that you're ever with us to be careful what we say, what we do, even what we think. We thank you and praise you for our visitor, Nanette. You know all about her, Father God. You know her needs, and I bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, Sister Amar